On the build show today, we're talking soundproofing. I'm actually in my daughter's bedroom and this wall right behind me just took three critical steps to reduce sound between this room and the boys bedroom on the other side. So today's build show all about reducing noise in your house. Let's get going. All right guys, today's video gonna be from the field. It's gonna be loud, I'm gonna apologize already. No pro crew, this is just me self-filming. I'm gonna talk about this right here. This is a wall that's a bedroom wall between my daughter's bedroom where we are here and my boy's bedroom on the other side there. So this is a wall that I really wanna quiet down. And there's really three things I'm doing on this wall to quiet it down. Uh, and I would call this the kind of three keys of simple soundproofing. Number one, insulation. We want to insulate that empty stud base so that when the drywall on this side resonates, it's going to help stop that resonation from coming through. I made a great video on Choir Rock. That's one of my favorites, but there are other uh, sound insulation uh, bats available as well. Choir Rock's probably my favorite uh, and works incredibly well. Next, we need to add uh, and a stopping of airflow between rooms. Outlets are notoriously leaky on airflow, so we want to seal our outlets, and we're going to do that with this. This is a putty pad. Uh, Hilti and Quiet Rock make them. I happen to like these Hilti pads better. They're about 10 bucks each, and all we do is form that around the outlet, and that's going to seal off the air. And it actually adds a little bit of mass to the outlet as well. You can also use airproof uh, outlets like this. This is by Arlington and this has a gasket on it. This also gives a, sur a surface to put some acoustic sealant on, but we want to stop airflow. Next, we're going to use a, a minimum 5 8 drywall, but in my case, I'm going to be using Quiet Rock ES. This is a drywall that actually has two sheets of drywall embedded in this 5 8 and there's some secret sauce in the middle there that I don't know exactly what's in there. I have the sense that maybe it's a, a thin sheet of metal or something, but this is actually a product that can give you, a, uh, in a fully... Um, correct assembly, a sound rating on the wall, which is gonna reduce the amount of sound. Remember, you're never gonna be 100% soundproof, but you can reduce the uh, amount of sound going from one room to the other. So don't promise soundproof, promise sound reduction. That's what we're doing. All right, let me show you how this works. Okay, step number one, we're gonna use this sound block. This is by DAP. There are others that make similar products. By the way, I really like these Tajima guns. Go ahead, brother. So what he's gonna do is he's gonna take that sound block and he's gonna cock this line here. The ceiling's hung already. He's gonna cock that line and then he's gonna run a nice fat beat in here. And then he's gonna run it all the way down the base. That's step one before we hang any sheetrock. All right, so GC Tech's doing a great job here. You can see they did the outline first. And we're just making sure we've got a good um, bead on the outline. But next, before the board goes up, he's gonna put a bead on top of the board, a nice fat bead on top of the board. So we know we've got good squeeze out. We're kind of doubling up here a little bit by doing both. You probably could have just done the sheet first or done an extra heavy bead, but this is really making sure that we've got good coverage between the board and the exi existing uh, ceiling board we put up yesterday. And then we're also gonna do that same bead in between the sheets. Now be kind to your uh, finisher, depending on who finishes this, wherever you get some squeeze out, you're gonna wanna pull, you're gonna wanna take a rag and wipe that squeeze out off because the sheetrock mud won't stick to that. We're gonna screw it off as normal, nothing special here. And you can see Nino is wiping it down now. He's just getting that excess off. That when the finishers come, uh, they're not gonna be mad at you for not, not being able to have the mud stick to it. And you wanna wipe it off while it's wet too. Don't let it cure. Actually, that's kind of an interesting point. This stuff is called uh, acoustic sealant and it really doesn't cure and that's the deal. Okay, the first sheet's up and we're gonna prep the second sheet by doing a bead down this edge and then on this bottom edge before we put those second boards up. 
Now he's now he's running a bead underneath the sheet, and we'll probably run a bead on the next board as well, just to make sure we've got really good coverage. If this was a do-it-yourself job and it was a you know one-man show, you probably could do it just per sheet. But I'm really trying to make sure we get good coverage and we don't miss anything. And again, you could really use anybody's acoustic seal, but Quiet Rock makes their own. I think it's called Quiet Seal. Um, but I happen to have a bunch of this DAP left over uh, from another project, so we're using that today. subfloor. We want to put a nice bead in there and then we're going to try and uh, get that sheetrock uh, to have a bead at the bottom of the sheetrock as well. We're going to keep the sheetrock off the floor of course but we want a nice bead in there so let's do that next. I use these Arlington outlets they have a uh, flange on them already, which even if you don't use acoustic sealant, works pretty darn well. But if you've got that flange, might as well put a little bead of acoustic sealant on there. Really get that thing nice and soundproof. So that's that's kind of cool. You guys are making great progress. I just want to review one last time that bottom plate. Uh, we did a really tight bead. Tried to push it in between the subfloor. This is our Vantec, and this is the bottom plate on the room next door. Also ran a bead on the plate itself so the sheetrock will register into that. And if you do these details, the wall will have a great reduction in sound from one room to the next. We got one little spot that we weren't quite sure we did a good job on that. So we're getting a little extra. We're gonna force into that gap just to make sure we've got some good acoustic sealant in there. All right, guys, did a great job on the hang and the details with all the acoustics on. Last step, you saw him cut the uh, outlet out. We need to seal between the outlet and the drywall. So let me show you how to do that. Clean it up a little bit, get some of that dust out of there so that our acoustic sealant is gonna stick. And then we're gonna try and jam a bead of the acoustic sealant. You can see I've got kind of a, more like a pencil tip going on this uh, gun here. And we're just gonna do a nice fat bead. It's really hard to get the upper side. We're gonna do our best and get a little bead in between the sheetrock or choir rock in this case, and the outlet. There we go. So now that putty pad on the back is air sealing, and this is gonna be that final step to make sure that gap between the drywall, uh, or sorry, choir rock in this case. You could also honestly do this method just with regular 5.8s if you had a room and you wanted to do some kind of uh, less cost soundproofing. That would work as well. All right, that's it. That is done. That wall is looking good. Let's talk costs real quick. Quiet Rock, you can find it even in home centers. Uh, it's stocked all kinds of places. It's gonna run somewhere around maybe $2 a square foot, something like that. Whereas regular 5.8s you might get for, uh, you know, 35, 40 cents a square foot. Remember, this, this price is gonna fluctuate. It's a commodity. Uh, the insulation that I use, that Quiet Rock Safe and Sound Bats, runs about $2 a square foot for materials. A tube of this sound block uh, or another acoustic sealant, usually like maybe $8 to $12, somewhere in that range. A nice Tajima cock gun, $30. Bucks. Uh, what else am I missing on materials? Really, that's it. 
Oh, oh, putty pads, I forgot those. Putty pads, the Hilti ones that I like are about $10 a pad. Um, you can get Quiet Rock putty pads as well. I don't like those quite as much. They're about $5 a pad. I just find them to be a little more brittle. They're a little harder to work with, so I do like the Hilti putty pads, but that's it, guys. Hopefully you learned something here. A few moments later. All right, guys, it's been a few months since we finished the drywall, and I wanted to do a test to see how well our soundproofing worked. We've got hardwood floors, we've got drywall in place, trim is here. Some of the electrical has been trimmed out, some of the low voltage hasn't. So here's what I'm gonna do. I've got a sound meter that you can see as I'm talking. I'm talking, uh, you know, 65, 70 some decibels. But I need something that will make a constant noise at a constant decibel. So I've got a little shop vac here. <laughs> Right near the shop back's about 78. This is my son's closet, which backs to my daughter's bedroom, right on the other side here. Let's see what it is, right next to the wall. Let's call it 76. Now let's walk over to the bedroom, and I'm gonna close the boy's bed behind me. You can see I don't even have hardware on, and I've got a little bit of an undercut on the door. So we've got a little bit of sound coming through both those holes. Come through this upstairs family room and into the door of my daughter's bedroom. Then we're gonna shut this door. And again, you see we've got a little bit of an undercut on the door. Now let's go to this same exact wall. I was literally right on the other side of this. And let's be quiet and see what our decibel meter says. somewhere around 45 or 46 decibels when I'm quiet, which means that we've got a 30 decibel drop with just this tiny wall and some sheetrock in between us. Just so you know, this is sheetrock and then this is a wainscot trim, which this trim really doesn't help us much because I've got these two outlets in the wall. Remember, we spent some time and attention on these outlets. This one is a low voltage outlet. This is a high volt electrical. That's where most of the noise could be coming through. But because we detailed the wall correctly, we've got a 30 decibel drop. This definitely worked and it made a huge difference. My kids are gonna have a really quiet room. They're not gonna hear what's happening next door to them. Guys, hopefully you learned something on this video. This is a big topic. A lot of people are really interested in soundproofing. And if you're a contractor watching this, I'll put a link in the description. I've made a lot of videos over the years about soundproofing. Don't be intimidated, but also make sure you get the details right. If you forget one of these major details, things can go wrong in a hurry. You really wanna be on the job site to, do to double check that the crew that you've trained is actually doing it per the manufacturer's specs. And if you do it, just like you see here, 30 decibels, that's a really nice drop. All right, guys, if you're not currently a subscriber, hit that subscribe button below. We're coming up on a million subs here on The Build Show. It would mean a lot to me if you'd hit that subscribe button. It helps me make content like this that's not sponsored, where I use products that I like and find interesting in ways that are, uh, you know, I think beneficial to you, my fellow contractors. So do me a favor, hit that subscribe button. Follow me on Twitter and Instagram. Otherwise, we'll see you next time on The Build Show. Hey, for my Build Show builders out there, the house is looking amazing, isn't it? This is my boy's bedroom right down there, and this is the entrance to my daughter's bedroom. There's kind of an upstairs family room in between, and I really think that soundproofing that I did specifically on those walls is going to make a big difference for both the kids to make sure they can sleep in, get a good night's rest. But I do want to mention, I didn't get into the finishing at all on the house and what we did to get this level 5 smooth here. If you're interested in learning more about that, I've got a brand new contributor over on our buildshownetwork.com website named Lydia Crowder. And Lydia is a drywall contractor up in Bozeman, Montana, that is just a really, really talented finisher. And she's super well-spoken. She really is able to articulate the finer points, the craftsmanship of her craft. So if you're interested, I'll put a link in the description. I'd love for you to go check out buildshownetwork.com and specific Lydia's page. You can learn about how she got into the business and every single week she's publishing new videos about everything drywall and all the related things that it takes to really do an excellent finished job. She also gets into the contracting side of her business and how she runs her business. So 
Anyways, thanks for watching today's video. Stay tuned for more from my house. It's looking amazing. I got lots more to show you. Y'all have a great weekend. We'll see you soon.